Good morning, everybody. You happy to see me? It's another new day, it's another new vlog. Let's go out and take a look at our load. We're about to deliver it. Not here, but uh, soon, close to here. There she was. Yeah, we gotta go down the road to Dundee, Ohio. We're just at a rest area right now, a little ways before that. So I have a feeling today is going to be a good day. You, you have that feeling? You feel it? You wake up today and just feel that tingly feeling like, whew, it's going to be a good day today. I don't know why. I'm feeling good. Actually, I do know why. You know why it's going to be a good day today? Because I'm going to make it a good day today. That's why. You're the only one who has control over if you have a good day or not. Well, actually... Them. You might argue that. Continue on this road for 47 kilometers. I gotta start the truck first, Karen. Calm down. I know you're excited too. Ah, there you are. Oh, oh my girl. Oh, I love my truck. I know it's a Volvo. It's not a Peterbilt or a Kenworth, but it's special because it's mine. Okay, I'm gonna reset all of my gauges here. My tripometer. Just because I keep daily track of my fuel use here and how many or what my mileage is during the day, so that I know how far I've gone. I like to get, uh, I like to drive no less than 800 kilometers a day, but no more than a thousand. I'd like to make 800 kilometers a day, which is uh, 500 miles. I like to make that like an average day. I don't want to push myself too hard all the time, but. If it comes down to it, I can do 650 miles on a day. Are you ready to rock, Diesel? I already gave you your treat. Don't look at me like that. I already gave it to you. You can't trick me. Continue on this road for 40 kilometers. Apparently, we're going to be turning on to Amish Country Byway. Back in small town America. Look at this. Isn't this awesome? Almost every, almost every house has a, a, an American flag on it. See, that's what I'm used to seeing. In small towns, you seem to see a lot more Canadian flags as well up in Canada. It seems the small towns are always a little more patriotic. I, I don't know. You don't see it as much in the big cities. Maybe I'm just, maybe I just haven't seen it yet, you know. But small town America. You know, we're going up to Smithville, Ontario, so we'll get to see small town Canada tomorrow. Which is practically almost, they look very identical, very, very much the same. A little bit of different history, obviously, but same like type of architecture and setup. Beautiful homes, look at that on the right there, just, I love it. Britt and I would love to build an old Victoria-style home on our property, like bash down our house and build a Victorian-style home. But obviously with all the modern uh, amenities, you know, air conditioning and stuff, but I'd love to have those, you know, 10-foot ceilings, huge archways, stonework. Oh, it's just, they don't build houses like they used to.
Well, I missed my turn. That's a bad thing to do in this part of the country, <laughs> in Ohio. This is definitely Amish country though, and Mennonite country, actually. I've seen quite a few Mennonite churches out here, and a lot of Amish people. That's pretty cool. Mennonites and Amish people are of the same stock, same bloodlines. Uh, I always just say the Amish people are just the Mennonite extremists, you know? <laughs> Those are our extremists, you know? Watch out. Really nice people though. I'm just gonna back in right around here. And apparently they're supposed to unload me right here. Exactly the reason why I love coming out to this part of the world, and this part of the country. Because it's so different than the Midwest where I'm from, where everything's flat, wide open, lots of open space. Everything here is so cramped together. There's so many people that every little square inch of land has been developed into, into some kind of purpose, right? Either a residence or a business or a road or, or something, agriculture. It, it's amazing. And then to see the Amish, how they live in the middle of all of this without any of the regular amenities that we all take for granted in that. I was just saying in a couple of clips ago, you know, I want an old style house, but I want all the fancy things like air conditioning and electricity. These people, they found a way to live without all that. It's, it's very fascinating to see it firsthand. I don't know if I could do it. You never know, I might have to. The way the world's going, I might have to give all that stuff up. It might be taken away from me by force, by the sounds of it, but... Okay, we're just gonna let them know we're unloading here. Okay, let's go get our straps off so that they can get to work. I don't think this place is exactly Amish because there's all kinds of vehicles around here. But the Amish people do sometimes use like forklifts and stuff. It's not like they're totally all just horse and carriage all the time. I guess it just depends on the, the person, on the people. Empty trailer again. It's time to get out of here. Find our way out of here. And we're off to Smithville, Ontario. We're gonna cross from Buffalo, New York into Fort Erie, Ontario. Uh, we're about, I don't know, four and a half, five hours or whatever from the border and from the from the shipper. I'm in no real rush, I just gotta pick it up tomorrow sometime. And then I've gotta bring that over to Manitoba for Monday. And we're gonna keep going from there. Unless they need me to take a reset, if they need me to take a longer trip. But uh, we're gonna be going, going, going now till Christmas pretty much. Had that expensive shop bill last week, plus 10 days off altogether while I was waiting for that and over Thanksgiving and everything that everything's going on. So, uh, not complaining, I'm just saying I gotta gotta put my foot down now and I gotta work, work, work. Beautiful countryside out here though. This is sort of like, Ohio I guess is like sort of like Pennsylvania sort of, you know they border each other I'm pretty sure, right? If I remember correctly. Yeah. Uh, Pennsylvania is one of my favorite states because of all of the the amazing architecture and the way they build their it's exactly like this pretty much Main Street US 62 it's exactly like this but a little bit uh, uh, more dense with bigger hills more rolling hills it's just beautiful I miss coming out this way so much and I wish I could go into Pennsylvania yet and like into New England. Man, I haven't been there in like over a year, probably almost two years now. Isn't that crazy? I used to go through there all the time when I was on my way up to Newfoundland and the Maritimes of Canada. Uh, times change, but maybe one day we'll be going back out there. I'd still like to take a few loads down to the southwest of the United States, but we don't have any freight, freight lanes going down there. So like I said, maybe one day. You know, one day I'd like to have my own running authority, so I think I just call it authority. I think we call it running rights or authority. You know, be my own boss, start to finish. I'd love to do that one day. I don't know if I'll ever be able to, but that's sort of the plan I'm moving towards if I can get to it. Well, that's another story. Because it's kind of nice that someone else takes care of all the biggest headaches, right? Collecting and everything and uh, finding the loads. 
but uh, I do lose a lot of money to them for that convenience. If I were to take on that headache myself and just do everything myself, which would be a lot of work and a lot of headaches, I'd have a lot more money. I gotta try to get past this tractor guy. Oh, he's turning, okay. Well, it's a solid line, so I can't cross that line now, even to go around him. I'll just wait, he's turning. There we go. Beautiful, thank you. Oh, one big traffic jam here. We've been sitting here for 15 minutes already. That'd be so much fun. You know, I'd love to try the Amish lifestyle for a little bit. You know, when everything hits the fan and everything collapses, the Amish won't even notice. <laughs> I guess they'll have less people buying their furniture. But. Finally moving ahead here. Road work ahead, you don't say. And these roads are so narrow here. I was talking about them before, like I, I love this. It's just when they do any road road work or if you miss a turn, <laughs> it's it's a pretty big delay. 200 meters, turn left on North Street, US 62 and then turn right in 60 meters. And our side was blocked for a long time too. Wonder if they're gonna let us all through now. Okay, well, yeah, I have to turn left here. I don't have much of a choice here, Karen. But even the church building is probably like one of the original buildings. So much history and heritage in this town. In all these little towns. What is this? Wilmot United Methodist Church. Okay. Well, now we're stuck at the lights. Okay. Get past one stop sign just to get to the next stop sign. <laughs> oh, there's police here at least directing traffic at the lights. By the looks of it. Poor construction crew. Like they gotta redo the roads, right? But it's so difficult to get it done without causing complete chaos. <laughs> Definitely chaos. <laughs> and this guy doesn't know how to stay in his lane. I need this lane. Turn left. I don't know why he's in my lane. Kind of. Kind of frustrating. He wanted to see what was going on so badly that he had to block the lane of traffic. Oh, he's letting me go. Okay, if I can get it in gear here. He's waving me across. There you go. It's the thing about automatic transmissions that I hate the most. You know, when you want to go, like I had the accelerator down there, it took like three seconds for it to figure out what Continue gear to put it in. For 13 kilometers. And then when it did decide on a gear, it decided it was the wrong gear. So it took another second or two to find the right gear. Meanwhile, I have my accelerator down on the ground, trying to go, and my truck's not going. My biggest complaint about automatic transmissions, that they just can't replace a driver, you know? If I ever buy a truck, another truck in the future, <laughs> are they waving at me or what are they, what are they doing? Playing a little Amish game? <laughs> Those were cute kids, all in their little get-ups. That was cute. What was I talking about? Uh... I forget. Automatic I, I prefer manual myself, but whatever. At least we're out of that kerfluffle now. So I've decided to take the toll road today. I believe it's the New York toll road once we hit the New York State. It's only going to cost me uh, 20 to 30 bucks. Canadian. And, uh, the alternative route is one hour longer, about 100 kilometers longer, and I've burned 35 to 40 liters per 100 kilometers. I'm empty now, so maybe a little less. And in the US here, I'm paying about a dollar per liter. Continue on this road for 17 kilometers. So a uh, dollar per liter, I'm 
going to be spending about 35 bucks to go around or I can spend, you know, 25 bucks just to take the toll road. So I'm saving 10 bucks and I'm getting there quicker. So that's the plan for today. Oh, we haven't been here in a very long time. This is Buffalo, New York. It's been years. The last time I was here, I was pulling dry vans. Never been here with a flatbed yet. But here we are, living the dream. Look at this. So we're uh, like three miles, five kilometers or so from the Canadian border. We're gonna cross, like I told you before, from Buffalo, New York here, at the port of entry into Fort Erie, Ontario in Canada. And from there, I think it's about another hour up to where my shipper is. I'm probably gonna go to the Husky, or there might, I think there's a Flying J around there, somewhere on the Canadian side. For now, we get to, uh, Enjoy the sights of Buffalo a little bit. They're doing some construction. And here they actually are kind of smart about it. They do construction at night when traffic isn't as bad. Thumbs up, Buffalo. I like that idea. Look, this guy's got like a ring on his head, like a raver. <laughs> That's smart. I'm not laughing at him because it's so, I'm laughing at him because it reminded me of a raver. But that construction dude, all the construction dudes here, they have like a ring of LED lights on their helmets or on their heads. So you can see them or where they are. <laughs> cool, those lights are bright. Wow. So here's downtown. Yeah. Huge city. Like every city in America is just huge. And then the Canadian side, Fort Erie, it's like a town. This is a little town. Small city. <laughs> For one reason or another, when our countries were being built. It was much, 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 much more attractive for most people to go and settle, pioneer, and build a life in America. So now we got this. <laughs> Drastic population differences. Population size differences, I should say. But, uh, I don't know, I've got a pretty good life up in Canada. I mean, it's all right. Uh, it's not exactly, I think it could be better, but you know, anybody, I'm sure Americans could say America could be better. You can, there's always room for improvement in every country. But uh, I still believe that Canada and the United States are my top two countries in the world. I'm a little bit biased, but I get to travel across both of them, and I love them both. Both beautiful countries. I make decent money up in Canada. I know you can make decent money here in America. There's opportunity. Uh, some people say there isn't, but I say just look. Exit 9, Peace Bridge, FTR Niagara Street. Because you know, if you, if you can't find work, don't go complaining to people that there's no work. Everybody's looking for truck drivers and you can make good money. Go get your CDL, go get your Class 1, your Class A license and start driving a truck. Stop complaining and move out of your mom and dad's basement. A little bit of tough love there from Trucker Josh at the end of my day. I need to calm down. This is called Peace Bridge. It connects the United States to Canada. I think that's fitting. I'm calling it the Peace Bridge. Diesel. We are almost in Canada. Almost. Approaching destination in 200 meters. 200 meters and we're in Canada, buddy. They've changed this since I was here last. Made it a lot nicer. Here it is. International boundary. I thought Karen was gonna tell me. Karen? Karen? In 300 meters, keep to the right on QNN. Slight right in 1.1 kilometers. Karen, why didn't you tell me? My God, back in Canada, don't you care? You're American, aren't you? <laughs> and as we come down off the bridge, we are on Canadian soil. I do gotta cross through customs yet. Where's my customs? Oh, it's over here to the right. Okay, I gotta shut this down here, guys. So uh, I will talk to you on the other side. There's the big Canada flag in the sky. I'm gonna stop here at Husky. Or is it Esso? Esso Husky. I don't know, it's the same thing now. Sort of like Pilot Flying J. Esso Husky. Because the sign here says Esso now. 
see if we can find a parking spot for us here. I don't know. There's already people parking down here on the driveway. You know what that means? It's probably pretty full in here. Well, maybe we'll get lucky. Maybe we'll get lucky. Thank you.